Hey guys, on this channel, we spent a lot of time talking about self-hosting and Docker and, and, and Docker containers and different ways to do different things with Docker containers. And oftentimes I forget that um, not everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, I've, I've just kind of, kind of been chugging along for the last couple of years making videos. And, and I often forget that sometimes we need to go back to basics. And I understand that not everybody has uh, the resources to buy, you know, dedicated hardware to try a new hobby. And that's why I'm glad that I was able to partner with Linode to give you an idea of, of how to get started with Docker and self-hosting while using someone else's hardware and not paying anything to do it, at least for a couple of months. So if you head down to the description, you'll find a link that will give you $100 in free credit to check out Linode and see if self-hosting is something that you want to actually get into and maybe even spend some money to get your own dedicated hardware. Hey guys, on this channel, we've spent the last couple of years talking about self-hosting and Docker and Docker containers and all kinds of crazy things that uh, that I've really enjoyed talking about over the last couple of years. And uh, one of the things that I have admittedly lost sight of is the fact that there are still people out there uh, who are just getting into self-hosting and don't necessarily have the resources to buy dedicated hardware. They may not have an old PC laying around to try. Maybe they don't have a Raspberry Pi. And that's why I'm actually really stoked that I was able to partner with Linode to make this video. In this video, I want to kind of go back to basics and I want to do kind of a an entry level, kind of getting familiar with deploying containers in Docker, but using kind of a third-party service called Casa OS to do it with a nice user-friendly graphical user interface so that we can kind of ease our way into getting familiar with some different terms and some different aspects of self-hosting. If we come over here to casaos.io, uh, here we can see their website and kind of get an idea of what Casa OS looks like. And honestly, it was it was there, it was an image that looked just like this one that initially got me excited about Casa OS uh, a, a year or so ago when I first saw it, um, because oftentimes graphical user interfaces for technical stuff is bad. I don't know how else to put it. Oftentimes a graphical user interface uh, that's created by developers is often really, really bad. It's not intuitive. Uh, it's function over form. And and I really feel like the folks here at Ice Whale Casa OS uh, have done a good job of, of bringing function and form together. I think they've done a great job with the aesthetic of their dashboard that will get installed here in just a moment. If we scroll down here, we can see that it is desktop friendly. It is mobile friendly. Um, it, is, it is obviously Docker friendly. That that's kind of why we're here. Uh, if we scroll down uh, here, we can see, you know, just more instances of kind of what's going on, um, you know, smart home control for no brainers. So this one, this one wouldn't necessarily go well on Linode, but if you decided that, uh, that this is something you wanted to pursue, you can do a home assistant, you know, on a dedicated piece of hardware in your home if you wanted to do that. Um, there's lots of different stuff that you can do with Casa OS. And I want to kind of give you an introduction to that uh, with Linode and, and kind of just let's get our feet wet here just a little bit. So if we scroll Scroll down. I, I love what they've done here, right? Um, because oftentimes, this is often what we see uh, on my channel. We're we're often looking at at a terminal window, or we're looking at a command line, or we're looking at something that's like, what what does all of this mean? And what I love about Casa OS is that if we open this up, this interface does all of that gobbledygook in the background for us, so that we don't have to. And and I, I've always been somebody who, who loves to learn new things and I love to reverse engineer things. And that's, I think, I think Cos OS does kind of a good job of setting up a good front facing interface so that we can get familiar with things and then kind of get an idea uh, with tinkering how things kind of work in the background. Um, and that that's why I love this little graphic here is because like they've got this and then kind of under that is all of the nonsense that may not make sense to a lot of people. And that's, they've just done a great job with that. Of course, below that, you know, we've got, you know, for the for the home cloud hackers and they show different hardware, you know, they've got a Raspberry Pi, they've got a Zima board uh, and they've got a, a NUC. So we've got a, a, an ARM platform and two x86 platforms there. You know, they've got Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi and uh, Debian, but this will work on so, so many different platforms and setups, whether it's hardware or software, they've done a great job of making this very, very user friendly. So, uh, here below this, we can kind of get an idea. They've got Plex and Jellyfin and Ambient Delusion, Transmission and, and, and Sonar and Radar and like just, they've got a ton. These are all apps that are in their, uh, pre-built app store. And what's cool about this is you don't 
have to use their app store to install apps. They actually have a section where you can just go in and fill in some blanks and install something that's not part of their app store. And we're gonna take a look at both sides of that later in the video. So if we scroll down a little further, they've got a Discord. I highly encourage you joining their Discord. If you have questions about things, they're very responsive. They've got a great community in there. Um, so definitely check out their Discord if you're not already a part of it. So basically the, 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 the installing Casa OS is one of the easiest things you'll ever, ever do, right? Uh, basically it's, it's, it's this command right here. So let's jump back over to Linode and uh, get a Linode spun up and then get uh, Casa OS installed. What we wanna do first is go over to Linode and get a Linode set up on their service. Um, so we're going to come over to here and we're gonna come up to the top right and click on create Linode. Basically at this point you can uh, choose which dist uh, distribution of Linux you wanna use. I'm gonna use Debian 11 here. Um, you can obviously, there are other options in here. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I think Debian 11 is a great solution. So that's what we're gonna use. As far as the region is concerned, you wanna pick something that's close to you, if at all possible. So we're gonna select region, and then Dallas, Texas is the one that's closest to where I'm at. So that's the one I'm gonna go with. We also got some different options here as far as dedicated CPU, shared CPU, high memory, or GPU. Uh, for the sake of kind of getting familiar with things, uh, I would probably go dedicated or shared CPU. Um, the, the reality is uh, the, 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 the coupon that you're gonna get in the description, again, it's 100 bucks for 60 days. So I'd say, let's go all in and uh, let's do a dedicated four gigs of, of RAM for 30 bucks a month. You're gonna be able to use a couple of months of this with no issues here. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna scroll down. Uh, the Linode label here, uh, I'm gonna call this uh, Casa OS Demo. And then we're not gonna worry about any tags or anything there. We're gonna go ahead and enter a root password. We will need that to log in to our server and make changes to it and that sort of thing. So be sure to set this uh, to something that uh, is secure, uh, but something that you can type without too much difficulty. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you had an SSH key on your system, you could import that and, and use that for authentication purposes, but we're not gonna do that in this video. Uh, below that, uh, I, I highly recommend backups. Uh, we don't need to create a VLAN or anything like that, so we're just gonna skip that. But uh, for backups, absolutely. Uh, backups are so, so crucial. When you're doing self-hosting, I have had backups save my butt so many times, even in the last week or so, that I can't recommend a backup solution like this uh, anymore. So choose the backup option. Again, we're just testing out on their dime, so why not? Uh, also, I like to have a private IP whenever possible, so we're gonna go ahead and select all of that. Once we've got everything here uh, set up the way we want it to, we can just uh, scroll down and click on Create Linode, and then we'll just kind of hang out and wait a minute. Uh, here, this, in just a moment, this screen will reload, and it will give us an idea of kind of what's going on in the background uh, as it's provisioning and setting up and booting and those sorts of things. Uh, once that's done, we will come back and uh, get logged into our server for the first time. A few moments later. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later and it says that our, our Casa OS demo is running. We can see we've got two CPU cores, 80 gigs of storage, four gigs of RAM. We've got an IP address, we've got SSH access. Uh, so we're just gonna come over here to where it says SSH access. And right here it says SSH root at our IP address. So we're gonna go ahead and click copy right there. And then we'll go ahead and open our uh, command prompt or you can use whatever terminal emulator you'd like to use. We're just gonna use this one. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in all big like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there and hit enter. And saying, hey, this is the first time you've connected to this server. Are you sure you want to do that? Uh, absolutely, I wanna do that. I just copied and pasted. So I'm sure that this is the right server. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it, type in yes and hit enter. And I'll enter my root password, the root password that we just entered a moment ago as we were setting up this Linode. And we'll enter. And here we go. Now we're logged in to as root at localhost. So the next thing to do will actually be to run the install script for Casa OS. So to do that, we'll go back to casaos.io. We're gonna find this command right here up here at the top of the page. We're just gonna highlight that, right click it, copy, come back to our terminal, paste that in there, and we're just gonna let it run. Uh, and here in just a few minutes, Casa OS will be up and ready to go. A few moments later. Okay, so here we are again, just a couple of minutes later, and it says that everything has installed as expected. And uh, we've got some information here, uh, like right there is the IP address that we wanna go to in order to access our dashboard. So uh, what we'll do is we'll come back over to here. 
This is, of course, our Linode dashboard. I'm gonna come over here to where it says IP addresses and click the little copy icon right next to it, open a new tab and paste that in there and hit enter. And it says, hey, welcome to Casa OS. Let's create your initial account. So below that, we'll click the go button. And we're going to uh, now enter a username and password for our account. Now, this is a single account setup. This is kind of, this is your playground. This is your Docker self-hosted setup. So there's just one user account for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and we'll go ahead and click on create. Okay, so here we are on our Casa OS dashboard. And again, I just, I love the aesthetic uh, of what they've done here. Well done guys. So let's take a quick look around what our dashboard is, what, what what's going on here, right? Top left. Uh, we've got an account option where we can um, edit our account, uh, you know, change our name, uh, change our password. Uh, can't do the uh, the icon there yet, and that's fine. That's that's kind of a, a whatever thing there. Uh, next to that, we've got settings. If we click that, we can show the search bar, which is right here. Uh, we can choose the search engine that we want to use. Uh, they've got three in here by default. Uh, we can change the language. They've got several languages in here. Uh, if you if you speak another language and would like to help them translate, I'm sure they would absolutely love that. Below that, we've got a web UI port. Currently, we are on port 80. If we come up to the top, we can actually see that there is no port at the end of this, and that's how we know we're on port 80. Also, because if we come back, um, there's no HTTPS. So if we were on HTTPS, that would be 443. We're not, so it's port 80 here. And we can change that. Let's say we had a an application that needed to use port 80. Uh, we could change our, our cost OS dashboard port to something else to free up port 80 for that other application, that other Docker application. Below that, we've got a wallpaper that we can change. Uh, we can just click this. Uh, looks like they've got a couple of different options here. Ooh, I really like that one. Or you can upload your own, so that's cool. We'll click apply. There's our new wallpaper, dig that. That's actually relatively new. Uh, so I love that they've added that. We've got uh, show recommended apps, which I think is great. Uh, they've also got the option to auto mount a USB drive because we're setting up basically a, a, a VPS on hardware somewhere else. Uh, that's not gonna be super relevant to us. So I've gone ahead and turned that off. Below that, we've got uh, our current version, which is 03. Five, one. Uh, and of course, below that, we would let, it would let us know if there was an update and give us the option to update from right here. So up here again, at the top left, we've got terminal and logs uh, where we can uh, log in and take a look at our terminal. And we've also got logs where we can kind of see what's going on in the background under Casa OS. So I dig all over that. Uh, we can close this. <clears throat> up here, we've got uh, obviously time and date. Our system status, uh, if we open this up, uh, we can see what our CPU is, two cores, four gigs of RAM, how much of those are being used. Uh, below that, we've got storage. It's not showing any, our, our totals down here, but for some reason it is showing it uh, right here. Uh, we've got 80 gigs available to us in our storage manager. We've got a network status. Uh, so that we can kind of see in real time uh, and even over the last 60 seconds or so uh, what our network has been doing. And then below that, we've got our widget settings where we can turn different widgets on and off as we want to for our setup. Uh, we've got the option to, inst uh, to use SyncThing to, in to, to synchronize files between multiple devices. I actually used to use SyncThing to, uh, to back up my phone. Uh, it was a great way to do that. Uh, if you're looking for a good way to back up your phone uh, that isn't NextCloud, that isn't... Um, <clears throat> Uh, a Google Drive or, 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 or Apple, whatever the Apple cloud thing is. Um, Sync thing's a great way to go about that. So let's actually go and click install right there. <clears throat> Uh, here we can see uh, the categories backup, the developer is sync thing, requires 256 or up to 256 megs of RAM and a gig of hard drive space for the application. So we'll just click install. We're actually installing our first Docker container already. Just by clicking install there, it's going through and pulling all of the resources it needs to deploy this application. So here we can see sync thing is right here. <clears throat> and if I click this, it's gonna take me over to this screen. And it says the sync, th oops, <laughs> do you want to allow anonymous reporting? I I'm just going to say no, this isn't going to be up for very long. Uh, the admin interface is configured to allow remote access without a password. This can easily give hackers. So please set a GUI authentication user password in the settings dialog. So if we click right here <clears throat> uh, and we come over to uh, here, let's just do it, right? 
and we'll click save. Okay, so here we are. Again, we're in a Docker container. We've already launched a Docker container uh, called Sync Thing. So if we wanted to say add our phone to this, right, we could click on add remote device and go through the steps to, uh, you know, show the ID that it, we need on, from our phone to put here. So the two can talk to each other and kind of go through that handshake process and then start backing up our phone as we, you know, as we set it up to do. We're not gonna do that. Again, we're just kind of getting our feet wet with the idea of taking a look at some different Docker containers and how easy they can be to install. I'm actually going to uh, close this sync thing uh, tab here. We're going to come back over. Um, and what the other thing I want to look at while we're here looking at sync thing, I'm going to click the three dots that are here and I'm going to click setting. Here is basically a, a, a Docker compose where we've taken all of the entries from a Docker compose file and transposed them into uh, all of the blanks that are in here. Now, of course, uh, Casa OS did this for us, but we do have the option to do this for ourselves. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a moment, but uh, this is kind of what that would look like uh, if we wanted to install an, our own custom app. So we've got, you know, the Docker image, the app name, the icon uh, or the URL for the icon that we want to display, uh, you know, here on our, our, our dashboard. Let's close this, this icon right here. Uh, below that, we've got our, our web UI. Uh, so basically here we can see that this is on port 8384. Um, our, our network is bridge. Most of the time it's going to be bridge. Uh, below that, we've got some other <clears throat> ports down here. Again, we've got 8384. Uh, again, that's the, the port that we use to access the dashboard. If we wanted to change that, what we would do is actually just change this option. This is the outside. This is like the, 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 the out, well, basically the outside of the container. This is the inside of the container. So whatever we make this port, we also need to make this port. So that's just something to keep in mind for later if you want to add your own containers that aren't part of the app store that we'll take a look at as well. <clears throat> now, sync thing does require a few extra ports to be to be mapped. Uh, each container, uh, each Docker container is going to have different uh, requirements as far as, you know, things like um, the, the ports, the volumes, environmental variables, each one's gonna be a little bit different, but I kinda wanna show you what this might look like. Um, and these different ports will do different things depending on the Docker container, who built them, those sorts of things. <clears throat> Uh, below that, we've got a couple of, of volumes. Basically, we got, we've set up a couple of folders on our Linode. Uh, uh, the first one is where we're going to store our sync thing configuration data. And then the next one below that is where we're actually going to store the data that we're backing up or we're syncing from other devices. So this one is where our settings go. This is where our actual data goes. So that's just something to think about there. Uh, we've got some environmental variables, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> uh, time zone, in this case, is going to be important uh, for the sake of making sure that things stay synchronized. So uh, this is actually wrong for my setup. I would change this to America slash Denver. Um, in this case, it's also got a user ID and a group ID. Uh, we can see U and G for user and group there. Um, and those are both set to 1000. That's a very standard uh, user and group ID for a, for a setup like this. Uh, so there's no need to change that. And then below that, we've got, you know, if we had additional devices or container commands uh, that don't apply to anything we're doing right here, uh, we could add those. Uh, we could run this as privileged if we needed to. Uh, we can set uh, our memory limit and our CPU, our memory limit by by dragging this around is necessary. Uh, our CPU shares, uh, what kind of CPU priority do you want each of your applications to have? Medium is the standard and it's probably fine for most every situation. Uh, our restart policy is uh, always, basically a restart policy means uh, if you have to reboot your, your, your Linode or your dedicated hardware or whatever, um, do you want this container to automatically restart? If it's set to always, if you reboot, it'll just restart. Uh, if if something goes wrong and it, it throws an error, it'll automatically restart. There are other options like only restart on failure or always restart unless I manually stop the container. So some different options there. Uh, I did additional uh, container capabilities. Again, don't need to worry about anything there. Uh, our host name, uh, again, sync thing. That's just the name of the uh, of the application. And then the application description kind of goes in below that. Um, up here, we can take a look at our, our logs for our terminal and our logs uh, for this. We can kind of get an idea of everything that's going on in the background. Uh, so if, if, if you're having an issue with a container and you're looking for help and somebody says, hey, what do your container logs say? This is where to find container logs in CASA OS uh, for each individual application. Uh, if we needed to, we could... Uh, 
We could do uh, any kind of terminal uh, manipulation via the terminal uh, window right here. If we needed to do that, we're not going to, but we absolutely could right here. Uh, once we're happy with all of this, <clears throat> again, I did change the time zone from, uh, from UTC to America slash Denver. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Basically, what it's going to do at this point is redeploy the container with the new settings. If I had made any changes, like, and if I'd actually done anything in the application, uh, because I didn't change where the configuration or the data is stored, it's only going to modify uh, that environmental variable that I changed, and it shouldn't affect anything else. So below or over here, we've also got, now that we're back on our on our dashboard here, we've got, uh, you know, smart up your home. This is more home assistant stuff uh, that isn't really relevant to a VPS uh, outside the home. Uh, also, it says currently still in development. So that's why we're not gonna go too much into that. <clears throat> Uh, over here, we, below that, we've got an app store uh, where, again, we've got a ton of different applications that we can uh, install with really just like one click. Like, let's say we wanted uh, a very basic Nextcloud install. Uh, we could just click install and it's going to install. And what's cool about Docker and containers and that sort of thing is that each container by default is isolated from all of the other containers. So if something goes wrong, a container crashes, uh, Unless you've got a, a more intricate setup, one of your Docker containers crashing most likely will not affect the other Docker containers unless you've got a database that's attached to a specific container uh, like you absolutely could with Nextcloud. We're not going to, but 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 the, the nice thing about Docker and containers is that each container is isolated so that if something goes wrong with one thing, it shouldn't affect another thing. And that's one of the reasons that I really like Docker. So here we've got our next cloud. And before we actually get into that, what I wanna do is actually come back up here to settings. And here you can see that this is all very, very similar to what we saw before. Uh, we've got our Docker image of Nextcloud latest. We've got an app name of Nextcloud. Again, we've got um, a, an icon URL for Nextcloud. Uh, it's got a port right here. That's going to be the port that we're going to access uh, the actual dashboard for Nextcloud on. Uh, we're not going to get into domains and that sort of thing with this. Uh, again, this is just getting your feet wet with uh, getting familiar with how to deploy Docker containers in the most basic way possible using Casa OS. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our, our the port that we're going to access uh, next cloud on. We've got our, our bridge network again. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, go to port 443 um, and access that on a, uh, an SSL. We're not going to, again, just because we're not dealing with domain names and anything like that. So I'm not too worried about it at this point. But uh, this is the port that, we, that we're going to access for our, our non-secure traffic. And that is our outside port that's mapped up here. And inside of the container is port 80. We're not going to mess with that. Below that, we've got a, a, a volume uh, for uh, Nextcloud. Now, a more robust Nextcloud instance would have multiple volumes here for, you know, for your data, for your config, for your apps, your templates, your themes, your, like it's each one can actually be stored in a separate folder, a separate mounted volume if you wanted to do that. But again, this is a very basic installation of Nextcloud here. Uh, no environmental variables. Um, it's got a container command of Apache 2 foreground. Uh, we can set this privilege. We can set our memory limit, all of the same stuff that we saw before. Um, so we're not going to change anything in here. Again, we can we can do a terminal and logs. Uh, here we can kind of see what's going on here. So let's go ahead and close this. And then just click on next cloud here. And right here, it's asking us to create an admin account. Now, before we get into that, because that's just entering a username and password, very, very basic. Below that, it says storage and database. And it says you chose a SQLite database. SQLite should only be used for minimal and developmental instances or development instances. For production, we recommend a different database. Uh, if you use clients for syncing, uh, the use of a SQLite da a database is highly discouraged. <clears throat> so if you wanted to use uh, a MySQL or a Marie database, uh, you can click this storage and database option here. Uh, check or come from SQLite to MySQL slash Maria database and enter the information uh, that's relevant to your database. Now, we haven't installed a MySQL or a Maria database here, um, but we would want to do that first. I don't even know if, uh, if that's an option uh, in here. So that's not an option in here. Maybe we'll take a look at that uh, at installing one of those here in just a moment. But 
Uh, again, we're just going to do a basic install here using the SQLite database. So I'm going to go ahead and create a username and password, and then I'll click install. And then we're just going to hang out, wait a couple of minutes. Uh, once the basic install is done, it's going to take us to the next screen where it's going to ask us, do we want to do a very basic install with no apps, or do we want to use uh, the recommended apps that it's showing us right here with Calendar, uh, Collabora Online, uh, Contacts, Mail, Nextcloud Office, and Talk. We're just going to go ahead and click install recommended apps. That way it'll just kind of give us a, a more, more full uh, experience when we first log in to our dashboard for the first time. Uh, once this is done, we'll get to there and we'll take a look. Okay, so the, the, the Nextcloud instance, the Docker container has installed. Here we are on our Nextcloud hub. This is kind of what it's talking about here. And I encourage you, if you're not familiar with Nextcloud, to go through and click through this and get familiar with Nextcloud. Uh, here we can click on start getting or start using. You know, here we can, you know, we can we can install additional applications. Uh, we can remove applications as we see necessary. Uh, Nextcloud actually has its own app store, which I love because then you can build out your own Nextcloud instance to be as robust or as sparse as you need for your particular use case. If you're going to be doing this, uh, I would probably go so far as to uh, set this up with a Maria database, um, but that's not really what we're going to do here. I just wanted to give an idea of how easy it is to deploy containers with just a single click in Casa OS. So now that we've taken a look at how to do a one-click install for any of the number of apps that are available in the Casa OS dashboard, let's take a look at actually installing our own app uh, a couple of different ways. So what we'll want to do is click on App Store. Up at the top, we're going to click Custom Install. So we could, if we wanted to, go in and manually fill out each of these different uh, boxes here. And in my opinion, that's tedious. I don't like to do it that way, but you absolutely could. Uh, when I first got into self-hosting using Portainer, uh, that's what I did. I went through and I just filled out the different things. And then I learned about other ways to do that. So what we're going to do is actually come up to the top right where this little import button is right there. Now, we've got three options here. The first one is a Docker CLI option. So for demonstrative purposes, we're going to come over to hub.docker.com. Uh, we're going to look at Linux servers Rem Remina. Uh, Docker container here, and we're just gonna scroll down a little bit, and here we can see that there's a Docker Compose as well as a Docker CLI, and that's kind of why I came over here is because it will show us both options. And the, the, the Docker CLI, uh, basically this is just a Docker run command. We're gonna run it detached, uh, meaning that it's not attached to the terminal. So if you close the terminal, the, the, the Docker container will keep running. If you don't run it detached and you close the terminal window, the, the Docker container will shut down. So that's what that dash D is for. Uh, we're gonna give it a name of Remina. <clears throat> Again, we've got an environmental variable. That's the dash E right there. Uh, the UI or the PUID and PGID that we saw before, again, are both 1000 by default, and that's fine. Uh, we've got an environment, uh, another environmental variable here of time zone of Europe uh, slash London. Of course, I would change that for my needs, but that's that's what uh, is there by default. We've got a port, which is that dash P of 3000. We've got a, uh, a dash V for volume. Where do you want this information stored? Um, and then, of course, we would map that to where we would want that stored. Uh, and then uh, and then on the other side of that uh, that colon right there is where it's stored on the inside of the container. We're just mapping those two places together. Uh, we've got a restart policy, which is right here, of unless stopped, like we talked about before. And we've got uh, the image that we would use uh, for that Docker container. So what we could do if we wanted to is just copy this, come back over to here, Docker CLI, paste that in there, click submit, and then it would just run. So let's actually do that. So off screen, I've modified this just a little bit uh, to be uh, more on par with our existing setup here. So let's close this. Uh, let's go back to App Store. Let's do custom install. Let's do import to get back to where we were just a moment ago. We're gonna paste this in there uh, with all of this information. So we've got our Docker run detached name Remina, UID, GID of 1000. I'm gonna change this to America. Uh, slash Denver, that's close to where I am. Port 3000, we've got our data where we're going to store everything, our restart policy, and our image, so we'll click Submit. And then it's saying, hey, we've taken this information that you've given us, and we've mapped it over to uh, our install screen, so verify that everything looks correct. So we're gonna click OK. <clears throat> we've got our Docker image, that looks fine. Our app name looks fine. Uh, it doesn't have an app icon URL in here, and that's fine. If you wanna put one in, you absolutely can, but you don't have to. Um, and below that, we've got a web UI. We need to put in port 3000 right there to map or to match up with the host port right here. 
Uh, we've got our volume that we that we mapped. Uh, we've got a PUID, PGID of both 1000 and a time zone of America slash Denver, just like we saw in our uh, CLI uh, over here. Again, I've modified the volume, but everything else is the same. So once we're happy with all of this, we can click install and then it will go through the process of pulling everything it needs and deploying that container. Okay, so uh, just after a minute or so, everything is it looks good to go. What we're gonna do is we can see over here that uh, the, the CPU is doing some stuff, the RAM is doing some stuff. Uh, we can see that everything, it looks like it's starting to settle in a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll click the three uh, uh, dots right there. We'll go to settings. Uh, we're gonna go over here to terminal and logs. We'll go to logs and scroll down. And it says right down here, listening on port 3000. So that tells us that we're good to go. Uh, if it were to have any error messages or anything like that in here, that's what you would use to troubleshoot your installation and figure out what might have gone wrong in that place. And of course, this is the information that you would provide to somebody if you were uh, seeking outside help. If they said, hey, what do your logs say? This is where you'd come to find the logs, to report back to them, to tell them what the logs say. Also, just as a little uh, tidbit, if somebody says, what do your logs say? copy and paste this. Don't just say it says some stuff. Don't don't be ambiguous about what the logs say. Actually copy and paste the logs so that the person trying to help can actually help. So let's go ahead and close this. And we're gonna close this. And I'm just gonna click here. And we'll give this a moment. And there is uh, our Remina app uh, up and running, ready to go. Uh, we're not gonna get into what Remina is or what it does. But again, I wanted to give a demonstration of how uh, another way to deploy a container using the command line interface option in Casa OS. Okay, so for the sake of showing how to install a Docker container in Casa OS using the Docker Compose option, we're gonna take a look at a, a dashboard that I really like called Heimdall. Uh, of course, this is, this is again, Linux server. Uh, they're, they're the ones that maintain this particular instance of this Docker container. Again, they've got the option for a Docker Compose or a Docker CLI option. Uh, and we're gonna use the Docker Compose version here. Now you may notice that this has port 80 and port 43 on the outside. And if you remember, our, our Casa OS is already on port 80. So we'll probably want to change the ports on one of these. In this case, it's actually easier to change the port on the Docker container. So that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna come to App Store. I'm gonna do custom install. I'm gonna do import, do Docker Compose. And I'm gonna paste in this Docker Compose file here. Again, we've got a, uh, we've got a version for this. Uh, our service under that version is Heimdall. We've got our image, our container name, our environmental variables. Again, with the PUID and PGID of 1000. Uh, again, our time zone of America slash Denver. Our volume of data slash app data slash Heimdall in this case is where it's going to go on our Linode. And I've changed the ports from 80 uh, to, and 443 to 8080 and 4443. And then again, a restart policy of unless stopped. All that looks good. So we can click submit and it's gonna be like, hey, again, we transposed this. So uh, verify that we did it correctly. So we're gonna go and click okay. Again, we've got our Docker image up here. We've got an app name. Uh, we've actually got an actual icon here that, that actually looks good. Uh, so we, we're gonna use port 8080. So we're gonna paste that in there right there. I actually like that it, when you click in there, it's like, hey, which of these do you want to use? Uh, that's actually fairly new from my experience as well. And I love that, that's great. <clears throat> uh, so all of this looks good. Uh, we've got our volumes there. We've got our PUID and PGID and our time zone. All of this looks great. So what we can do next is click install. Again, it's gonna pull everything in the background. And uh, then once it's done, we'll go ahead and take a look just that quickly. We'll click, uh, actually we'll come up to here, we'll click on settings. Uh, we'll go to our terminal and logs, we'll go to our logs. And again, uh, service uh, checks st uh, successfully started, setting permissions. So all of this is looking good. So let's go ahead and close this and let's click this. And there are no currently pinned applications, but just that quickly and easily, now we have a dashboard up and running. So if we wanted to create a custom dashboard for a different purpose, we could do that using Heimdall. There, look, there's lots of dashboards out there. <laughs> this is just one. Uh, so don't, I'm not pandering to Heimdall. This is just one application that I've used in the past that I really like. So for this part of the video where we're going to take a look at a third way to install a Docker container using uh, Casa OS, we're gonna take a look at Bookstack for a couple of reasons. One, I really like it. I actually use it uh, where I put instructions to all sorts of stuff on this website. This is Bookstack hosted on my local server uh, for the general public to use as they need to, to get information about different resources and that sort of thing. The other reason is that <clears throat> um, 
this application requires a database. Now, originally when we looked at Nextcloud, we had the option to do a database with that one, but we skipped it. Again, we wanted to kind of work our way into this. So uh, here we can see that the book stack, uh, again, it's got, uh, you know, the, the image, the container name, the environment, all of this stuff that we've looked at already. Um, and we've also got an app URL. Uh, we've got a database host, a username, a password, uh, and a database. Uh, those are things we haven't seen up to that to this point in this video, and that's because we haven't installed a database yet. So the first service in this Docker Compose um, is right here, and that is Bookstack. The second service is a Maria database that we will use to store all of our data for our Bookstack instance. So this container, this Bookstack, in order to get Bookstack to run, actually requires a Bookstack container and a database container. So uh, to show that we, we, we could, if we wanted to, you know, copy this, like so, so come back over to here, go to App Store, go to Custom Install, go to Import, go to Docker Compose, paste this in here, of course, open this up, modify the couple of things that we need to modify for the URL, um, the, the password, those sorts of things, uh, and then click submit. But we've already kind of done that. So we're gonna take a look at a different option. We're gonna click cancel. We're gonna go to import. And this time we're gonna look at app files. Now, in this case, an app file is a JSON file. There's a couple of different ways we can get JSON files. One, we can write them ourselves. If you like to do that and you hate yourself, more power to you, but that's not how I like to do it. Um, what you can actually do, let's come over to here. Let's go to settings. And right here, uh, we can see that there's, you know, terminal and logs and then export app file. If we click that, Right there is our heimdall.json file that we could then, with all of our settings saved in that, um, redeploy somewhere else. Now, I've already done that with Bookstack um, because I've taken a look at Bookstack in the past on Casa OS. So we're actually going to deploy Bookstack and a database using those JSON files, those, um, those app files. So again, we'll go to App Store. We're gonna go to Custom Install, Import, app file. Now, in order for this to work, the first thing we actually need to have up and running is our database. The app, the, the, the Bookstack application needs a database to connect to before it can actually go through its setup process. So the first thing we need to do is get our database set up. So what we're going to do is go over to my downloads. Uh, right here, I have a Bookstack underscore DB. Uh, so that's the one I'm going to do there. I'm going to click submit. And again, it's like, hey, we've transposed what we could verify everything for us, right? So we're gonna click okay. <clears throat> Here we've got our Docker image, our app name, our URL. Uh, we don't necessarily need a web UI port here because we're not going to be interfacing with a web UI. Not, we're not gonna be accessing a user interface for the database. So we don't need to put anything in there. However, we do need ports to connect to uh, for the application, for, for the Bookstack container to connect to. So we're gonna have some ports down here. Uh, again, we've got, uh, this is actually, uh, I wanna change that. So we're gonna go ahead and just paste that in there. Uh, and then we've got our, our config, we've got our UID, our GID, our root password, time zone, our database, our user, and our password. Um, and, and these are all things that we will need in order for our book stack container to connect, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click on install. Again, it's gonna go through this process of pulling everything and deploying a database container. And here we go, there is our database container. So let's go ahead and look at our settings. Uh, we'll go to logs. So it looks like everything here is doing what we would expect it to do. That's good, no error messages or anything there. We can see that, um, that our database is, is kind of bouncing around up in here and that's fine. So now that our database is up and running, now we can actually go through and import our app file for our Bookstack container. So again, app store, custom install, import, app file, click there. Uh, we're gonna do Bookstack. I've got a couple of different versions of this, but we'll click submit. Hey, verify this for us. And then we've got, again, our Docker image, our, our app name, um, our icon URL, uh, the the IP address or the, the port that we will use to access the user interface is 6875, that's fine. Uh, again, I, I do want to change like so. And uh, then we've got some environmental variables of a UID, our PUID, PGID, our app URL. In this case, we wanna change this. Uh, this was uh, for uh, something I had set up previously, oops. So in this case, I'm gonna put in 45.79.51.236. And I'm gonna put the same thing in uh, right there. 
so our user is bookstack, our, our password and our database, those were all configured in the previous container. These should all be fine. So if I scroll down, I should be able to click install. There we go. So again, it's gonna pull this and then hopefully here in a minute, it will pop up and we can get in there and actually get into uh, a multi-container uh, self-hosted setup here. So there is, uh, there's our bookstack app. Let's go ahead and open this up. We'll go to settings again, uh, terminal logs, logs, scroll down. It said it didn't resolve, but sometimes that's a false positive. Okay, so that was a false positive. I, I was able to verify, uh, here we go, uh, that our, our app URL and our database host, those are fine. In fact, if we come over to here, uh, here's our login screen. So we're good to go there. Our login, oops, uh, is actually admin at admin.com and a password of passwords. So we'll do admin at admin.com. Okay, so here we are, we're logged into Bookstack. We've actually got Bookstack up and running using two containers, one for the application and the other one for the database to store all of the information that the application can access. And of course, put on the screen here. Okay guys, there you go. There's how to get started with self-hosting using somebody else's hardware and then a very cool uh, operating system overlay called Casa OS. Uh, the thing I really like about Casa OS besides the interface is that there are multiple ways to do the same thing using this interface. Whether you wanna use uh, command line or the Docker CLI or Docker Compose or, or app files that you can get from different places online uh, or, or you want to just go in and manually fill in each of the little boxes. There's no right or wrong way to do things using Casa OS with, with regards to deploying different kinds of containers. And I absolutely love that. And that's why I wanted to show it in this video to, to give you the option to uh, have several different ways to try things out and find out what your comfort level is uh, and not have to buy any hardware. Again, uh, Linode is gonna give you a hundred bucks in free credit if you use the link in the description to check out their service for 60 days. Hopefully you found this video helpful and kind of gave you some ideas of, as far as some things you might wanna try with getting your feet wet using Docker um, and self-hosting and Docker containers and that sort of thing. Um, again, sometimes I, I forget that there are still people out there who are very, very new to this. And I wanted to make kind of a more uh, entry-level friendly uh, video to get people interested in the idea of checking out Docker and self-hosting to see if it's the right fit to suit any of the needs that they may have for whatever they're doing with their day-to-day -day stuff. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you give the video a thumbs up. It really does help me out quite a bit. Again, don't forget to go down to the description where you'll find a link to get a hundred bucks in free credit over on Linode for 60 days. So with that said, I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will hopefully talk to you guys in the next video.